Hello, friends, and welcome back to Five Agendas, the first thought paper for the year. New Sphere, the Omega Point. Its relationship to biblical history, its influence upon Laodicea and the Apocalypse, part one. What is New Sphere? Does New Sphere hold a mystical influence that coincides Jesus' end time prophecy in Matthew 24, 15, which he called the abomination of desolation and its kindred warning, the first angel's warning of Revelation 14? Yes. This discussion sets out, according to the Bible, the history of New Sphere in its many subtle formations unto its ultimate development of Revelation 13 and the miracle working false prophet in discussion, part four. New Sphere. The Omega Point, End Point, Christ Consciousness, Unity Consciousness, Hive Mind, Spiraling, Singularity, Nirvana. What is the new sphere and its connection to biblical history? It was a term which was developed by a French Jesuit priest whose name was Pierre Telhard de Cardin. Please see these links. Oh, for de Cardin, the new sphere emerges through and is constituted by the interaction of human minds. The new sphere has grown in step with the organization of the human mass in relation to itself as it populates the earth. As mankind organizes itself in more complex social networks, the higher the new sphere will grow in awareness. This concept extends Telhard's law of complexity consciousness, the law describing the nature of evolution in the universe. Telhard argued the new sphere is growing towards an even greater integration and unification, culminating in the omega point, an apex of thought consciousness, which he saw as the goal of history. His ideas, according to the times which he lived, appeared to be a radical departure from Catholic Church doctrine. The omega point is an event in which the entirety of the universe spirals toward a final point of unification. The term was invented by the French Jesuit Catholic priest Pierre Telhard de Cardin from 1881 to 1955. Telhard argued that the Omega Point resembles the Christian Logos namely Christ, who draws all things into himself, who in the words of the Nicene Creed is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and through whom all things were made. In the book of Revelation, Christ describes himself thrice as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But when one analyzes the story of his particular order, being that of the Jesuits, it should come as no surprise at all, especially to his comrades within the order, as well as outside of the order, considering the fact that the Church of Rome has all the theological tools necessary for what appears to be a radical departure from Christianity. Some of the theological tools are as follows. 
monasticism, number one, which is derived from ascetic practices of the Gnostics in order to close the mind to the world of empirical content. Two, contemplation or centered prayer meditation whose goal is to achieve unity with the universe is totally different from regular prayer which is directed to the Father in heaven in the name of Jesus. Three, unity consciousness spiritualism or mysticism as evidenced by saint Teresa of avila and saint john of the cross these two saints of the roman church are prime examples of supposed unity of the mind with universe see the link here which they claim to have experienced in the form of what appears to be a timeless black void yet the church persecuted the Alumbrados, that practice the same thing. Fact is that neither Teresa of Avila nor St. John of the Cross saw God, since according to 1 Timothy 6.16, no one has seen God. 1 Timothy 6.16 Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. No one has seen God, especially by way of spiritual exercises. It appears that Timothy was being instructed by Paul against Gnostic teachings, who were saying that you don't need faith, that once you achieve unity consciousness, you become one with God. It is precisely this point that the mystics and unity consciousness advocates all believe that they can achieve oneness with God. Some will call him the universe. Number four. The creeds of both the Eastern and Western churches feature Christ as begotten, not created, prior to the ages. And this runs contrary to John 1.1, 1, 1, and also contrary to Romans 1.3, and what Jesus stated about himself as being the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 22.13 and 16. Emanated Logos. Emanated Logos equals Christ being birthed as a thought or emanation from the Father, and he in turn created the material world. Believing in an emanated Logos prepares the way for the secret doctrine of the occult, which is soul-cycling in the form of emanations from the so-called one consciousness of the universe, which can either return to the original source of consciousness supposedly by way of the process of life, death, and rebirth, which includes self-judgment of karma, or by way of asceticism and punishment of the flesh. The Apostle Paul stated that both were useless in combating fleshly lusts. As one can see, there is no difference between the Hindu mystic punishing his body, or the Catholic penitent crucifying himself during Holy Week. It's a way of obtaining merit. John 1.1 1, 1. John 1.1 1, 1 does not present the concept of an emanated Logos. One should see immediately that John 1.1 1, 1 clearly states that the word was in beginning and alongside God and was God. whereas the Nicene Creed states the opposite, which says, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Fundamental Objectives of Creative Belief Many years ago, there was a family friend who was Catholic, and at times we had talks, yet I could never explain to him that the fundamental doctrine of his church creed would one day provide the basis for the teaching of the Jesuit Father Pierre Telhard. Jose stated from time to time that some within the organization were saying that there will come a time when the Catholic religion would be overhauled and turned into another religion. Being a Seventh-day Adventist at the time, I knew a lot about Rome, but I never realized that the specific seeds for this change actually resides within their own creed as well as that of the Orthodox Church. fact is that Seventh-day Adventists get bogged down on the Sunday law matter, fail to recognize two things. One being, they adopted the intrinsic formulation of the Nicene Creed above as fundamental beliefs number two and four in the statements of beliefs, and two, that the concept of the new sphere and its concept of one consciousness will be the basis for the mark of the beast. And worse, two schools of Laodicean theology sustain the attack on the first angel's warning. A, the papal trinity in the fundamental beliefs, and B, the Aryan version via Wagner and Jones. And being as bogged down as they are with the National Sunday Law means they have no reason to grasp why they are brooking the ongoing attack upon the first angel. First angel's warning. Which will come in its furtherance of the unity of the one God super consciousness concept. This is already present in reference to a wrong interpretation of the text within the Shema of Deuteronomy 6.4 and will be placed on the right hand and forehead as seen in Deuteronomy 6.8 and Revelation 13. What is the true Shema? The true Shema, whereas the true Shema explanation requires a proper understanding of the original two divines, as depicted in Psalms 110, 1-4, and John 1, 1, as well as Genesis 126, and also the words for one, which are akkad, which equals oneness in two or more, and yakid, which equals one singular being. The Shema utilizes the word akkad, since Elohim is a plural word, word, word which translates as gods. Elohim equals plur, plural word for God, so it's gods, and are in fact two independent singular beings which are one in purpose, love, and accord. What is required in this matter about Nusfer and such is a right understanding of the word Elohim, which is plural, but according to modern rabbinic Judaism, it means one singular entity. This point must not be forgotten. Alpha and Omega of Deadly Heresies the same problem arose within the Seventh-day Adventist Church in which their own messenger, Ellen G. White, spoke about a coming change, which she referred to as the Alpha and Omega of Deadly Heresies, which would be received by the denomination in what she termed a new movement. And nothing would stop it. New Sphere, the Omega Point, Endpoint, Christ Consciousness, Unity Consciousness, Hive Mind, 
spiraling singularity, nirvana. In order to sum up the matter of how the new sphere, which was coined by Pierre Teilhard de Cardin and the Alpha and the Meg of Deadly Heresy, is that it was referred to by EGW as one in the same thing. We first have to study this concept, which has different terms. The first being unity consciousness, the second being a hive mind, the third absorption into the divine, nirvana. There was an original heresy in the early Christian church which provided the fundamental basis of this new sphere concept, which in reality is that all the minds of planet Earth will one day reach a consensus of unity in the form of this, a so-called oneness of spirituality, as well as social cohesion. And there is a third term which applies to computers, which is referred to as singularity. And all the world worshipped the dragon? Please see the links to be continued.